Good morning students. In today's lecture, we will be discussing about the function of kidney and the physiology of excretion. The kidney filters the blood in a three-step process. The nephron filters the blood that runs through the capillary network in the glomerulus. This is the first step where the nephron filters the blood. Almost all solute except for proteins are filtered out into the glomerulus by a process called glomerular filtration. In the second step, the filtrate is collected in the renal tubule and most of the tubules get reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule by a process called tubular reabsorption. In the loop of Henle, the filtrate continues to exchange solute and water with the renal medulla and the peritubular capillary network. Water is also reabsorbed during this step. Then the third step is the additional solute and waste are secreted into the kidney tubules during tubular secretion which is the opposite process to the tubular resorption. So we can say that there are three steps in urine formation. First is the glomerular filtration, second is the tubular reabsorption and third is the tubular secretion. The collecting duct collects the filtrate coming from the nephron and fuse in the medullary papillae. From here, the papillae delivers the filtrate, now called urine, into minor calyxes that eventually connects to the ureter through renal pelvis. In glomerular filtration, it filters out most of the solute due to high blood pressure and specialized membranes in the afferent arteriole. The blood pressure in the glomerulus is maintained independent of factors that affect systemic blood pressure. In the Malpighian body, it is a physical process. The diameter of afferent arteriole is bigger than the efferent arteriole thus creating pressure in the glomerulus. The glomerular hydrostatic pressure is the blood pressure in the glomerular capillaries which is about 55 mm of mercury. The colloidal osmotic pressure of the blood 
which is 30 mm of mercury is due to the presence of plasma protein. It opposes the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. The third hydrostatic pressure is called the capsular filtrate. which is the capsular filtrate hydrostatic pressure of glomerular capsule and is caused by filtrate that reach into the Bowman's capsule. It is about 15 mm of mercury. It also opposes the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. Therefore, the effective or the net filtration pressure EFP is equal to the glomerular hydrostatic pressure which is 50 mm of mercury minus the sum of glomerular colloid osmotic pressure which is 30 mm of mercury plus the capsular or the filtrate hydrostatic pressure of glomerular capsule caused by the filtrate that reaches the Bowman's capsule. So the effective filtrate pressure is equal to 10 mm of mercury. Now this pressure what is mentioned here states about with how much pressure the filtrate is passing down through the kidneys into the ureter the afferent arterioles has a high pressure of blood and it brings in blood at 625 ml per minute of which one fifth gets filtrated. The ultrafiltration rate is 125 ml per minute or it may be about 180 liters per day. This rate of formation of filtrate is called the glomerular filtrate rate. Now what is the purpose of stating about the glomerular filtration or about the effective filtration rate what is the purpose why we are saying all this the purpose is only to explain that how much ml of the filtrate per minute is obtained and we know that when the blood which flows into the afferent arterioles with some pressure is filtered in the glomerulus it is passed through the Bowman's capsule into the proximal convoluted tubule so this filtrate which is passing 
through the nephron is passing under pressure and it is because of this pressure we get about 180 liters of the filtrate per day this is the ultra filtration rate or also known as the glomerular filtrate rate the epithelial cells of visceral layer of bowman's cup called the podocyte as i have already described in the diagram the body of the podocyte rest on feet like process called pedicel the individual legs have foot processes the gap between the foot process are in close contact with the pores in the endothelium of the blood capillaries through the permeable basement membrane this arrangement facilitates the transfer of fluid because of the high blood pressure about 1/5 of the blood gets filtered but actually it we can say plasma more conveniently because as i have already told you that the pores are small so through these pores the red blood cells cannot pass only the plasma gets passed from the capillaries into the bowman capsule and from bowman capsule to the proximal convoluted tubule from there passes to the henle's loop then again goes to distal convoluted tubule finally into collecting uh, tubes or tubule which all opens into the ureter so it is this high blood pressure that 1/5 of the plasma gets filtered via this filtration path into the urinary space of bowman capsule the glomerular filtrate contain all constituent of blood like glucose amino acid salt water urea except the blood cells the plasma proteins and fat because their size is more or bigger than the size of the pore hence the glomerular filtrate is also called as the d proteinized plasma now this is again the picture showing the various region of the nephron each part of the nephron performs a different function in filtering waste and maintaining the osmotic or homeostatic balance that is you can see in this diagram different arrows are shown the green arrow shows the passing of the filtrate which contain the plasma that is all the constituent of blood except rbcs and proteins it passes into the proximal tubule from where the water is reabsorbed important solutes are reabsorbed and the filtrate again passes to the descending limb of the loop where again 
the water is reabsorbed in ascending loop again salts are reabsorbed so we can say that each part of the nephron performs a different function in filtering the waste and maintaining a homeostatic balance the glomerulus forces small solute out of the blood by the pressure and we have calculated the effective filtrate pressure which came out to be about 10 mm 55 minus 30 plus 15 in the previous we have calculated 55 minus 30 plus 15 so it came out to be 10 mm so we know that the glomerular forces small solute out of the blood by pressure the proximal convoluted tubule reabsorbs iron water and nutrient from the filtrate into the interstitial fluid and actively transport the toxins and drug from the interstitial fluid into the filtrate the proximal convoluted tubule also adjust the blood ph by selectively secreting ammonia into the filtrate where it reacts with hydrogen ion to form ammonium ion the more acidic the filtrate the more ammonia is secreted the descending loop of the henle is lined with the cell containing aquaporin this i have already stated in previous video lecture so the henle is lined with cell containing aquaporin that allows the water to pass from the filtrate into the interstitial fluid in the thin part of the ascending loop of henle sodium ion and chloride ion diffuse into the interstitial fluid in the thick part of the ascending loop of henle these same ions are actively transported into the interstitial fluid because salt and not water is lost the filtrate becomes more dilute as it travels up the ascending limb in the distal convoluted tubule potassium ion and hydrogen ion are respectively secreted into the filtrate as i have already mentioned that how the water is not lost in the distal convoluted tubule the salt is reabsorbed in the ascending limb of henle so the urine becomes again diluted while the sodium and chloride ions 
along with the carbonate ions bicarbonate ions are reabsorbed to maintain ph and electrolyte balance in the blood the collecting duct reabsorbs solute and water from the filtrate forming dilute urine this is the diagram showing what i have just spoken the glomerular filtrate or filtration filter out most of the solute due to high blood pressure and specialized membrane in the efferent arteriole all the solute in the glomerular capillaries except the macromolecules like protein pass through by passive diffusion in tubule the tubular resorption occurs in proximal convoluted tubule and all nutrients are reabsorbed and this occurs by either passive or active transport resorption of water and some key electrolytes are regulated and influenced by hormones this we have already discussed sodium is the most abundant iron and most of it is reabsorbed by active transport and then transported to the peritubular capillaries because sodium is actively transported out of the tubule water is also independently reabsorbed into the peritubular capillaries due to the presence of aquaporin or the water channel in the proximal convoluted tubule this occurs due to low blood pressure and high osmotic pressure in the peritubular capillaries however every solute has a transport maximum and the excess is not reabsorbed in the henle's loop the permeability of the membrane changes the descending limb is permeable to water and not to the solutes the opposite is true for ascending limb as we have seen in the picture in previous slide additionally the loop of henle invades the renal medulla which is at high salt concentration and tend to absorb water from the renal tubule and concentrate the filtrate the osmotic gradient increases as it move deeper into the medulla because the two side of the henle's loop perform opposite function it acts as a counter current multiplier the loop of henle act as a counter current multiplier that uses energy 
to create the concentration gradient. The descending limb is water permeable and the water flows from filtrate to the interstitial fluid. So, the osmolality inside the limb increase as it decreases or descend down as filter filtrate enters the ascending limb sodium chloride ion exit through ion channel present in the cell membrane the sodium ion is act actively transported out of the filtrate followed by chloride ion. The osmolarity is given in unit of milliosmomol per liter. The reabsorption is controlled by the hormones also. Excretion of waste occurs due to lack of reabsorption combined with the tubular secretion. Undesirable product like the metabolic waste, urea, uric acid and certain drugs are excreted by tubular secretion. Most of the tubular secretion happen in distal convoluted tubule and some occurs in early part of collecting duct. The kidneys also maintain an acid-base balance by secreting the excess hydrogen ion. The osmoregulatory part of the kidney, as I have already said, that the acid base balance is maintained by the kidney. We know that the fluid balance is controlled by antidiuretic hormone, which is produced in the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior pituitary. When the amount of water in the body is less, the Antidiuretic hormones secretion is increased, which increases the reabsorption of water from the distal convoluted tubule and collecting tubule, thereby secreting a concentrated urine or the hypertonic urine. When the water intake is more, antidiuretic hormone secretion is decreased which makes the distal convoluted tubule and the collecting tubule less permeable to water as i have already discussed few minutes back and a large amount of dilute urine is excreted now, how the electrolyte balance is maintained? The electrolyte balance, that is, the presence of sodium ion, potassium ion, chloride ion, hydrogen ion, etc., are maintained by or controlled by aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. The concentration of sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, magnesium, bicarbonate, etc. is regulated 
by their increased or decreased reabsorption in proximal convoluted tubule calcium and concentration is maintained by calcitonin a thyroid gland hormone and parathormone secreted by parathyroid gland calcitonin secreted by thyroid gland aldosterone is a hormone secreted by the adrenal gland and it helps in the reabsorption of sodium by excreting potassium in exchange in the distal convoluted tubule or the collecting duct can see in this picture the composition of urine the volume is about 1200 to 1500 ml per day color is pale yellow mainly due to the urochrome a bile derivative urobilin and urethrin contribute to it specific gravity 1.01 to 1.03 slightly acidic it is odor is ammoniac it constitutes mainly urea uric acid ammonia and creatinine inorganic components include water chloride sulfates phosphate of sodium potassium calcium and magnesium although the parts of the renal tubule are named proximal and distal in a cross section of kidney the tubules are placed close together in contact with each other and in contact with the glomerulus this allow for the exchange of chemical messengers between the different cell types for example the distal convoluted tubule the ascending limb of the loop of henle has masses of cells called macula densa m a c u l a macula densa which are in contact with the cells of afferent arteriole called juxtaglomerular cells together macula densa and juxtaglomerular cells form a juxtaglomerular complex designated as j g c juxtaglomerular complex the j g c is an endocrine structure that secretes hormone erythropoietin it secretes enzyme also 
when hormone triggers macula densa cell in the distal convoluted tubule due to variation in blood volume or blood pressure or electrolyte balance these cells can immediately communicate the problem to the capillary in afferent and efferent arteriole which can constrict or relax to change the glomerular filtration rate of the kidney so in this picture we can see that how the proximal distal tubules are closed and how the cells of distal tubule called the macula densa and the juxtaglomerular cells of the efferent arterioles they are closed forming the juxtaglomerular complex these structure or this association acts like an endocrine gland secreting the hormones which detecting the blood pressure blood volume and the electrolyte balance can cause the contraction of efferent arterioles or relaxation of the arterioles thus changing the glomerular filtration rate besides kidney the skin and the sweat glands and the sebaceous gland present in the skin function as an excretory organ skin contains an outer epidermis layer and inner dermis layer within the dermis are present the hair follicle sweat gland and sebaceous gland sweat glands are highly coiled glands found more in four hand armpits palm and sole of the feet they are found more in the uh, forehead armpit palms palm means the front of the hand sole of the feet the secretory part is the coiled part and it lies deep below in the dermis and is connected to the skin surface as the perspiration pours via a long narrow duct they are simple unbranched tubular gland they function to secrete a colorless salty fluid called sweat carrying excessive water sodium chloride urea uric acid lactic acid glucose and amino salt thus it regulates the water salt balance excretion little of urea and cools down the body plays a major role in thermoregulation that is water is converted into vapor by excessive heat the sebaceous gland present in the skin are alveolar gland present in connection with hair follicle they secrete sebum which is rich in wax 
स्टीरोल हाइड्रोकार्बन एंड फैटी एसिड्स सीबम मेक्स द स्किन वाटर प्रूफ एंड हैज एन एंटी वायरल एंड एंटी बैक्टीरियल एक्टिविटी दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द स्किन द एनाटमी ऑफ द स्किन शोइंग द टू लेयर डरमिस एंड एपिडर्मिस वेयर द स्वेट ग्लैंड सिबेशियस ग्लैंड एक्सेट्रा आर सिचुएटेड the role of skin and lungs lung is also an excretory organ the by product of cellular respiration are water and carbon dioxide the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is higher in deoxygenated blood of alveolar capillaries of the lungs brought from all parts of the body thus in the alveolar air hence it diffuses into the alveoli and is exhaled out from the body our lung removes large amount of carbon dioxide water is also lost from the lung surface by evaporation this has a cooling effect that is a thermoregulatory effect in many animals especially the desert animals liver is the largest gland of the body and it secretes bile containing substance like bilirubin biliviridin cholesterol degraded steroid hormone vitamins and drugs most of these substances ultimately pass out along with digestive waste and in some urine now this is a counter current mechanism which i was i had already briefed you how the counter multiplier system causes the dilution of water dilution of urine sorry and passage of urine and conservation of salt and secretion of excess of solute and secretion of excess of water the counter current mechanism the henle's loop and the vasa recta play a significant role in counter current mechanism the flow of filtrate in the two limb of henle's is in opposite direction and thus forms the counter current the flow of blood through the two limb of vasa recta is also in the counter current pattern the proximity between the henle loop and vasa recta as well as the counter current in them helps in maintaining and increasing osmolarity towards the inner medullary interstitium that is from 300 milli osmolarity per liter in the cortex to about 1200 osmolarity per liter in the inner medulla this gradient is caused by sodium chloride and urea sodium chloride is transported by ascending limb of henle's loop which is exchanged with 
the descending limb of vasa recta sodium chloride is returned to medullary interstitium by ascending portion of vasa recta similarly small amount of urea enters the thin segment of ascending limb of henley's loop which is transported back to medullary interstitium by collecting tubule the described transport of substances facilitated by the special arrangement of henley's loop and vasa recta is called the counter current mechanism this mechanism helps to maintain a concentration gradient in the medullary interstitium the presence of such gradient helps an easy passage of water from collecting tubule thereby concentrating the filtrate the human kidneys can produce urine nearly four times concentrated than the initial filtrate formed this process is said to be one of the greatest adaptation by a, by any terrestrial mammal in order to conserve water failure of kidneys to adequately filter the toxin and waste product from the blood results in causing several ailment or diseases and this could be due to the decrease in glomerular filtration rate elevated serum creatinine level abnormal fluid level in body deranged acid level abnormal level of electrolyte potassium calcium phosphate and other uh, ions depending on the cause hematuria that is the loss of blood in urine and proteinuria that is loss of protein in urine may occur long term kidney problem have significant repercussion mm-hmm. on other mm-hmm. diseases such as the water such as the cardiovascular disease there are two types of kidney failure first is the acute kidney injury and second is the chronic renal failure acute kidney failure results in rapidly progressive loss of renal function pre renal or intrinsic or post renal causes the acute kidney injury may be due to several other ailment could be due to diabetes could be due to some uh, high fever some idiopathic causes some unknown reason the causes of acute renal failure may be pre renal sudden and severe drop in blood pressure due to shock or interruption of blood flow to the kidney due to some severe injury or illness intrinsic may be due to 
some damage to the kidney by swelling or inflammation due to toxins, drug, infection or reduced blood supply. Post-renal may be due to sudden obstruction of urine flow due to enlarged prostate gland, kidney stones, bladder, a tumor or injury. The chronic renal, renal failure may develop slowly and initially it would show very few symptoms. Acute means sudden and fast. Chronic means slow and deliberate. Very, very uh, slow, showing very few symptoms. Chronic renal failure can be long-term consequence of irreversible acute disease or part of a disease progression. As I have said, diabetes. And when kidney failure occurs, one of the most sought out remedy is to go for a dialysis that is artificial filtration or taking out of toxin and metabolic waste from the blood this is the whole unit from which the blood is uh, made free from toxins the red color shows the red blood cells the triangular green color shows the blood proteins the yellow colored dots are the solute or the salt and the brown color dots are the waste product so from the blood The solute or the salt and waste product are removed from the system.